Hello everybody and welcome to episode number two of Coffee with Kyle. I hope you enjoyed the first one. I'm Dana. And I'm Kyle, here to talk to you today about our love story and how we started talking. So sit back, relax, grab a cup of coffee, and enjoy. Well, thanks again for clicking on our podcast. I hope that you did not have trouble finding it. You can find it on Spotify, Google Podcast. This will be on YouTube so that you can check it out there because we're starting to revamp things here. But we said we're talking about our love story today and I think that it's super exciting because there's a lot of change going on in our lives. And I think something important to note is how we started to talk. And I know you don't always love telling people how we did, but why don't you tell everyone how the two of us started to talk? So it took me a while to admit this to people. I don't know why. Um, but I had messaged you on Instagram about like you had been creating video content and I was going to make some vlogs and back then it wasn't back then in the day. It wasn't like very, I don't know, people weren't doing it as often as they are today. And you were one of the people who was putting themselves out there and you had followed me on Instagram a while back. So I was like, okay, I like literally genuinely wanted some tips on vlogging and video content and you'd message me back and I honestly thought you had a girlfriend at the time and I wasn't trying to like interrupt anything I just literally wanted video content um let's clarify that I did not have a girlfriend at this time yeah he didn't have a girlfriend and I would never be a homewrecker but I literally just wanted to learn about like how you were so comfortable in front of the camera and Obviously, um, some people already know, like, you were shy, and this has kind of helped, especially in the professional world, and you're a great public speaker, so I I don't think you were ever a bad public speaker. I know you don't like to look at your old interviews. Um, But anyways, so yeah, so I had messaged you, and I think, should we pull up the messages? We can't, but they're so far. Like, the problem... No, I think I screenshotted them. Maybe. If she can pull them up, we will, but... The problem with that is that we send each other so much on Instagram just to like have reference. Like to. mostly funny memes. So or... now going back to the original messages are so hard. But on her end, I don't really ever remember following you on Instagram. Like I might have come definitely across. Definitely did. Anyway, <laughs> I don't really I don't remember that part. But I do remember when she messaged me. I was in shock almost because. Like, for for me, when I was looking at her Instagram and I was sifting through what her posts were, like, she was way out of my league, without a doubt. One, I didn't want to base it on followers, but one, she had an absurd amount of followers compared to myself. And at the time, you could see likes on photos, and she was getting thousands of likes. So I had, I just was astonished. She was kind of the first person that I ever came across that was ever even messaging me that was at that magnitude. And so I basically saw you as this, like, person who, like, not – just out of my league. I, I don't even know how to explain it. The Flattered. Best I seriously was. I don't know how to explain it. If you can't find it, don't worry about it. Oh, wait. Oh, no, I did find it. Okay, well, you can read it. You want me to read it all? Read it. Ha- well, no, just read, read what you sent me <laughs> originally because then we can go from there. So I said, hey, hey, sorry for the random DM. So your blogs have inspired me, and I attempted to make one when I went down to spring training. I give you major props. They aren't that easy. I guess I didn't ask a question. Laugh out loud, thank you. Lots of work, especially on my own, because for anybody that knows, I do all the videography, all the audio, all the editing on my own, and it's all self-taught. I like to kind of pride myself on teaching myself something new every day. And this was one thing that I really was interested in. So I do it all on my own. And then you asked me, did you ever upload it anywhere? And I said, I can imagine it's not done yet. My intern's cutting it right now. Intern. (laughs) And then basically we just like went on and you were like, you got to cut it yourself, blah, blah, blah. And then we were just chatting back and forth. So we'll pause there. Then I took the initiative because... I, like, I the said, messages kind of ended. Like, they, it wasn't really going anywhere. It wasn't going anywhere. Then I think I had to re- double message you at one point. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so after all that happened, it wasn't really going anywhere. I didn't, think, I didn't think anything of this. I thought that she was strictly messaging me to get some advice. And you were. I was. Like, there was nothing else to it. There was no ulterior motive. It was just Dana messaging me. 
to ask for some advice. And that's exactly how I saw it. I was not looking for anything. I didn't want to be in a relationship. I didn't care to be in a relationship. I wasn't trying to talk to anybody. And so when she messaged me, it's exactly how I took it. I then, for some reason, it might have been because I thought she was so out of my league, that I just messaged you and randomly said that I was going to be in Philly at some point in the next, like, two weeks, maybe, <laughs> and if I could take you out on a date. I think that might have even been how I yeah. phrase it, which... I had no expectation of being in Philly <laughs> at all, but I figured well, out. Well, you thought for the hill you might be coaching. Yes, but you like, never, you know, never know schedule. You don't know what team. Like with the hill, we had different teams. So there was like a senior team, a junior team, and then another team. And so you didn't. I didn't really know where I was going to be, but I just threw it out there that I was going to be in Philly and wondered if I could take her on a date. It was definitely a shot in the dark. I thought I had absolutely no chance. And... Yeah, that's pretty... I I took the initiative. She messaged me, which I give her full props for, but there was no motive to anything outside of advice, but I took the major step in asking if I could take her out. And you never came to Philly. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I never did. But then, again, we kept talking, and actually, I think that one thing that we really need to note in here is that when you messaged me for the first time, I was making a trip to spring break. Oh, yes. Not the kind of spring break that you may be thinking. Spring break for lacrosse with the Hill Academy. And so Luke Magnon and I, who ended up being the best man in our wedding, we were driving to North Carolina that same day. And we had a, like a 16-hour drive ahead of us. From practice, right? From practice. We, had, we were playing for... An NLL team, and we had gone to practice in Six Nations. We were finished practice, and then originally we were going to fly out, and the flights didn't work out. So we rented a car, and we left from practice in Six Nations. We'd worked all day, mind you. That There was no nap or anything involved. We drove to practice, which was like an hour and a half drive. Practice from 7 to 10, and then we left after that. Grabbed a quick bite, grabbed some coffee to keep us energized, and then we hit the road for 16 hours to North Carolina. It was that long? Yes. Uh, it, 14, 16 hours. It was long. Jeez. It took us 16 because of the circumstances that we endured. Um, did you stop at all? Like, did yeah. you sleep? No. <laughs> we just, no. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> so Luke and I left. And the reason is so important because this was the first time that we had started talking. And so I was super keen on trying my best to make sure I was awake or messaging you at whatever point I possibly could. And so we were driving this whole time. And then Luke and I hit Erie. And Erie is the best way to explain the circumstances that we were in because while we were driving on the roads, it was extremely eerie. There was nobody else on the roads. We hit a ridiculous snowstorm. Couldn't even see five feet in front of us. There were no tire tracks, anything in front of us. Who was driving? Luke, uh, Luke at the time. Oh, okay. And there was, there, we were the first ones to go through this snowstorm, so we had no guidance as to the like, track marks or anything to lead us where we needed to be. So while we were driving, all of a sudden, we're going up a little bit of a hill. I just start to feel the car going completely sideways, completely <laughs> sideways on the highway as we're cruising along. And as we do it, I just grab Luke's arm in the most calm demeanor I've ever done in my life. I grabbed him and I was like, we're going to be okay. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say that you were driving the whole time. <laughs> no, Luke was driving. And it's probably best that he was driving during that time because I don't know if I would have been as great as he was. But we'll never forget. It's something we laugh about to this day um, because literally we, we almost died. And had that happened, or even really anything for that matter, maybe we were not even talking to this day because... <laughs> We drove the whole night, woke up in the morning, but Dana had gone to sleep at this point. By the time she even woke back up, we were still driving, but I tried to like kind of make sure that when she was going to wake up roughly, I had no idea, but tried to gauge it so that I did my driving while she would be sleeping. <laughs> and then when she woke back up, I would be in the passenger seat. That way I could text her for the rest of the time I didn't know on that. our way to North Carolina. Yes. <laughs> Mind you. We, like I said, we had no sleep this whole time. So Luke drove the first little bit, then I drove, then Luke drove, then I drove. But every time that Luke was driving, I was awake. When I was driving, Luke was in the back seat or the front seat, <laughs> passed out, 
<laughs> within seconds. At the blink of an eye, Luke was sleeping. So I tried to structure that whole drive to like be able to text you. Because it was the first time, and I didn't want to lose out on any momentum. I didn't want, <laughs> like I said, she was way out of my league. So I didn't want her to think, okay, he hasn't responded in a day or did two, and maybe he's not interested anymore. And Meanwhile, I it. thought he had a girlfriend. So. I did not have a girlfriend. Anywho. Um, I don't remember where I was when I was messaging you. Um, um, probably in my apartment. Um, but definitely at first I was like, eh, like we have some mutual friends, like I'll test the waters. Okay. Why not? I reached out to Riley who was, uh, also in our wedding party. You agreed to meeting up with me. Yes. Oh yes. I did agree to meeting up with you. Did agree to meet up with you. After like Riley gave me like the seal of approval, I felt a little better so I was like, oh, I don't know. Like, we FaceTime. Then we started to FaceTime. So then it became a little more real. And it was not like, oh, we're sitting behind a screen messaging. Um, so, yeah. And I think from those messages, looking back, we got off the DMs pretty quick. I think you asked for my number pretty quick. So we got away from, oh, this is so annoying having to check Instagram. <laughs> well, it was nice to just be able to talk to each other. One, texting, but also on FaceTime because, I mean, in today's society, like, a lot of relationships do start via social media. Now it's so common. It is. And it's also scary, though, because the first time that you ever came, like, you had no idea what to expect aside from the FaceTime calls and text messages. Like, when you just took a leap of faith to actually show up and hang out with me, yeah, that was pretty much it. And, I mean, I'm a hopeless romantic in the sense that I wish it was old school. I wish that you had to send snail mail and you had to write letters and you had to like physically go see somebody. I'll never forget, like even your best friends back in the day, like having to pick up a landline and call somebody. Not that it was even that long ago, but actually call somebody. And like if you got their parents, you'd be terrified to talk to them. (laughs) Like I couldn't imagine. I wish that it was the case, but I couldn't imagine having to like pick up a phone, dial your number and have your parents on the phone and be like, Hi, is Dana there? And then just be like, nope, sorry, bye. <laughs> That's how quickly it could have been shut down. That's probably how most relationships in the past were shut down. Um, but social media, it's so prevalent now that that's where a lot of relationships started. And you took a leap of faith to actually come and hang out with me when I invited you to Rochester, which, touche on your end. Um, yeah, I took a flight. Yeah. But once we started talking, we, it was, we moved, we moved quickly. Yeah. Like. Like, I we saw each other every weekend. In that situation, I don't think that you can really move slowly because if you do move too slow, like, eventually somebody's just going to get sick of it and you're going to lose interest. Yeah, especially with distance because we did distance for the whole first year. For the whole, f- Yeah, for the whole first year we did distance. But it turned into any single moment that she was able to come see me or I was able to go see her. We were on a plane going somewhere. And or driving. Like, or driving. one time you had a Hill game, I remember. I'm like, I want to say it was, like, upstate New York or Pennsylvania. And whatever. I was like, okay. I'm going to... You were like, I don't <laughs> have much time to see you. I have, like, 15 minutes in between games. I think, like... I don't even think we got alone time. Like, I think I had lunch with, like, you and Brody and Cam. Mm-hmm. And it was, like, literally torrential downpour. So I didn't even watch the yes. games. I sat in the car and watched Netflix. Um, and I literally probably saw you for like 15 minutes, but I still drove four hours. So in long distance relationships, anybody that has been in them, I'd be interested to know, you can comment down below what your experience was like, because for us, you start to become really good at just being able to see people for 10 minutes, an hour, and you learn to make the most out of what you're dealing with. So I think maybe even early on, like had it not been for long distance, if we were in the same city, I'm not saying I would have got sick of you, but... It would have been way different. It's way different. I can see how people get sick of hanging out with the same person or, like, doing the same things so early on. I think that space is good. And especially in our case, like, space made you miss the person more. Like, if I wasn't with you, I missed you every second that I wasn't with you. And, I mean, if we were in the same city and I was able to just drive to your house or something... It Easier been, access. It would have been different. Like, I would have just, I would have missed you and I would have saw you. Totally. Whereas we missed each other, but we would miss each other for like 
two weeks, three weeks at points. I think it, we went like one time, went like a month without seeing each other, mm-hmm. which is tough. I mean, we were just listening or to worlds it. at least when you were in Israel. That was you were there for a while, but yeah. Sorry, what were you saying? Well, we were listening to other people talk on podcasts and YouTube, and them talking about how long they waited to see each other. And I mean, theirs was a lot longer than ours, but for the most part, we were pretty good. Any the tough part too with us was that. It wasn't a three-hour drive to go see one another if we wanted to. We were a flight away. And, and it was expensive. Anybody that has ever flown from Toronto to Philadelphia on more than one occasion, I think you understand my problem in saying this, that it's like the most expensive flight. Interna- ever. Like interna- I'll say internationally because it kind of is. But, I mean, I might have had a flight that was under... Four hundred dollars once. Same for you. Yeah, I mean I American think, was a little different, but it was. It's a small plane. It's the one and then the two seater, and like I literally knew the schedule and the times of every flight, and always, of course, like the good, like the six o'clock or seven o'clock flights on a Friday were always the most expensive, and I had my fair share of like delays, cancellations. I think I spent twenty four hours at the airport before, um, and. You, you know, you take it for granted. And in the moment, obviously, like, I was upset a lot because I would get mad when I was delayed or something would happen. Now I can't even remember. I do remember being on the floor of the airport once really upset. I think I'm pretty sure I had to, like, we were waiting for the flight to come in from Montreal. And then the crew said that they had flown for too many hours. So they canceled it. So I did have to go home. And then I came back. That definitely happened. But, yeah, we've gone through our fair share and travel and frequent flyer miles. But it's now it's it was American Airlines that I flew then. At the beginning, I wish I had done Air Canada more because now we, all we fly is Air Canada. I would have had status. That's very true. You would have gained it very quickly. Yeah. And she was a trooper, mind you, because if she would come see me, mine was a little different, but if you would come see me, you were taking a 6 a.m. flight. Oh, a Back Monday out, morning. Monday morning. And then you were going right to work and then working the whole day. And I mean, it's not obviously easy, but those are just kind of some of the things that we were doing in order to really see one another. But that was nice because we, then we got Sunday night together because a lot of the times it was we were at games. So we'd go like Friday, we'd drive to like you, Luke, and I would drive to Rochester me at the game. Sunday, we'd drive back and maybe get to do something on Sunday, but... For the most part, it was mostly lacrosse and hanging out in the hotel. Yeah, you were a trooper. I think that this is something we can start to do, maybe start like a little bit of a trend on this front of our love story because there are a lot of components that go to it. And I forgot about those days. Those are fun. There's a a (laughs) lot to cover. We had some fun and we had a lot of troubles with flying and stuff like that, but we had a lot of fun. I think we've had more trouble here with flying. Definitely here. There, that was easier, but it was still long days. Um, but I think let me let comment below. Let us know if you th- if you like this, if you think that it's fun, if you enjoy it. And I mean, everyone's love story is a little bit different. Ours was definitely different. Um, but we can even talk about like the first time you met my parents because that was easy. That was early too because you came to a game. And oh, you and they were there, and your parents. Them. Yeah, I was forced so, to meet them. I think that's something that we can start to do. Maybe we'll start a little trend with this a little section on our love story, but I hope that you guys enjoyed. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up. Leave us a comment down below. Subscribe to our channel. Hit that red button, that subscribe button. Follow us on our Spotify podcast and give us five stars or whatever you do in the podcast world. And thanks for listening. Bye.